the Q&A. So let's jump into it, huh? Army Piper, what's up, buddy? Living on the west side, El Paso. Welcome back, First Go Crypto, Amy Johnson, TMD Tesla, <laughs> wrench revoked. Shoot, the heat is coming. In California, it's been two weeks of 100 degrees. That's a lot. I saw in, um, I want to say it's Las Vegas, New Mexico. Not Las Vegas, Nevada. Las Vegas, some other place. Uh, they, they've only got 30 days left of water over there. So uh, lots of fires, lots of issues with uh, uh, supply chain, and it's uh, it's getting pretty ugly out there. Majarki, I must have given all these people memberships. It's only given a few. That, thank you so much. Such appreciated. Where are we here? Ah, Shalon says, yes, Gareth Salloway, which I got to tell you is like everywhere. Gareth Salloway, uh, Soloway is like everywhere on different YouTube channels. He was right about going to 20K. That's true he was. Now he says 12K. Nah, eh, we'll see. Nothing would make me happier than to see that smug face be wrong. <laughs> yeah, yeah, me too. Who knows? That's why like I used to do prediction videos. And they used to get a lot of views. Unfortunately, they weren't very correct. So I stopped doing them. But, uh, I mean, Gareth, he was right about this one, so let's see if he can write about another one. Again, it's very hard to, to be right consistently over the years. You're not going to get him right all the time, and no one's perfect. And that's what View says. No one's perfect. <laughs> What's this membership scam? And the, the, Jarky's given, he's, was giving out uh, memberships, which is pretty awesome. At some point, can't do it every time. Ah, oh, that's a good idea. Vuli says, hey, Rob, here's something for you to sell me on your channel, a poster, all your rules to crypto. It's not a bad idea. Should probably do that at some point. Yep, energy bill here in El Paso has been killer. Imagine if what, I can't imagine what it's like in California if it's that hot. Thank God I have solar panels. You know, I'm gonna ask everybody a real quick question. I've got friends in Puerto Rico who have solar panels and they say they suck. They say that they're, they're not able to power the whole house. There's an issue. So I just don't know if that's an installation issue or if that's a product issue. So if you own solar panels, let me know if those actually work because I would like to look into that and get those for the houses. Because we don't know, like in Texas, we don't have many rolling blackouts, but in Puerto Rico, it's like once a week. So you know, I think that would be nice to have. Ah, Jacob Chow says, one penny of Fed quantitative tightening. They promised $110 billion, yet they only took half of it for three months. Fed might promise $95 billion starting on September. Debt too big and high interest. I don't know if they can raise. Again, as far as quantitative tiding, they have to do something. They have to, keep, they have to keep the pressure on because Jerome Powell knows, just like in the 19, 1976, 77, 78, when Burns was the chair of the Fed, uh, he did not enough as far as raising rates and tightening. Actually, this is the first time they've done tightening. So... This will be a new thing for everybody, and we'll see how it works out. But uh, as far as the rates go, I think he has, to, he has to keep raising just to keep his boot on the neck of inflation because he can't let it get out of control again because that will lead to a depression. I missed the show. Give me a recap. Nope. Uh, you can watch the beginning. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, Casey. Let's see. Alisha. Uh, Alisha. Alicia. Basilio. Says, can you provide a link to your other channel? I can't find anywhere. It's a great thing you asked. It's very simple. I will show you. So there's a link in the description. Scroll down. And it looks like follow. It says follow Dan. It says Twitter. Right there. And then Dan DGen is the second channel. And that's where I go over the more risky stuff that uh, you'll probably lose all your money on. So that's just the gamble channel. If you like to gamble, that's the channel for you. If you'd like to just hear about the news and be safe, safe-ish, uh, this will be the channel to stick with. Rewind is, rewind is free. That is true. Lexi says, your 2020 prediction is how I found you. You're like, oh, this guy was really wrong. Let me watch, watch some more. Yeah, Lexi, that was, nah, it's, it was working pretty well for a while until it didn't. 
Piper. Piper. Rob, do you think Coinbase is worth keeping for dedicated customer service and one million in account insurance or not worth? I'm thinking about canceling too. Look, here's the thing. Remember, it doesn't matter where you buy it. Just get it for as low as you possibly can. And then what do we do when we buy our crypto? We, we take it off. We take it off the exchange, right? We put it in our Trezor or Ledger or some kind of cold storage wallet device because we never know. We never know. And I think they changed this. I have to do a follow-up, but in the beginning, there was a story about how in the terms and conditions of Coinbase, they state, if we go bankrupt, your crypto is not your crypto, it is our crypto. I, as I understand it, for the terms and conditions, they've updated that to where it doesn't say that anymore. Doesn't matter though, here's what you probably should do. Wherever you use your, your, to, to buy your crypto, wherever you wanna go, just use that place and then take it off. And then you can just, just kick it and uh, there's, no, there's no issues. Um, that's what I would try to do myself. And then, where'd it go? Yeah, there's this, there's this video I like, which this, is, this was, a, it was a leaked video of, of a, a Bitcoin maximalist convention. And uh, it shows what Bitcoin maxis were thinking uh, are doing when uh, all these different centralized exchanges collapsed because they had everything in cold storage. So this, this was what it was. That's essentially it. So uh, remember, if you have things in cold storage, you don't have to worry about this junk. So that's, uh, that's my, my best advice. Thoughts on the hot dog shrugger. That was interesting. So if you haven't seen this, this, this video, it's a guy who uses a straw, pokes it through a hot dog, <laughs> and he's in a, a baseball game, and he puts that into his, his cup of beer and sips the beer from the hot dog. I think it's genius. Let's be honest. Who doesn't like hot dogs and beer? Maybe the guy's got, he, he's only got so much time to enjoy these things. You got to, you know, get things done. David says, Rob, looking good. Thank you. You too for not, th thank you for not predicting and thanks for no Sweatcoin talk. Oh, so you want to know about Sweatcoin. Well, let me tell you something. September 12th, Sweatcoin's coming out. <laughs> That's it. I have some insider information I just can't just share with you guys. Uh, holy smokes. Reaper Man says, my electricity gas bill in the UK is set to triple by Christmas. What the heck is going on? That can't, that can't be sustainable. And that's why, like, I know when people talk about nuclear energy and they're so afraid of it, that's where we should be going, period. Nuclear energy. There's a, a couple of different great videos from, from former environmentalists who are now proponents for uh, nuclear energy. And I got to tell you, I think that's the right way to go. I mean, solar energy and wind energy, sure. But, I mean, it's not going to cover the whole debt. I think that's the way to do it. Rob, thoughts on Simon Dixon going to El Salvador? Try and make a recovery plan for Celsius. Be interesting what they come up with. I'd like to have him on the, I think he did a video. I should have him back on if I can, just to ask him about that. Simon's got a pretty good idea. He's like, look, he goes, we, can, we can't make investors whole now. It's impossible. But if you want to work with the company and be given like a, uh, like they were talking about incentivizing the, the Bitcoin mining process to being part owners of those, then you'd have to wait. You know, it might take two, three, four years, but then you would be a, a whole investor like what they did with Bitfinex. If they could do that, great. Uh, I got nothing but time, I hope. So uh, yeah, I could see that going through. But NFL Salvador wants to say, okay, we'll, we'll do some type of uh, token that will give you some type of ownership in XYZ token but it uh, might take a little bit, bit of time. Sure, I could see that. I would do it. I'm not telling you to do it, not financial advice, but uh, sure. No, it's interesting. The carpenter says, the problem with solar is the way they're installed. If they're wired in series and one segment of the panel is blocked by shade and the rest of the panels are also blocked. Huh.
<laughs> hey, Rob, you in the Army. Would you go with a reliable revolver or M16 that jams up every clip? Wow, the revolver. This is my Solana argument, shutting down when you need it the most. Yeah. I mean, some people love Solana. Sam Bakeman Freed says it's the best thing out there. So I don't know. Maybe it's just growing pains. Oh, nice. Gary says, I work in a nuclear power plant. It's safe. Great. Thanks for the sweat coin. You're welcome. Ah. USA Reserve is only half full, about three weeks worth. Take one and a half days to produce one day of use. Hmm. Oh, yeah. Dennis Conrad says the forecast for the UK is 18% inflation by January. Have you guys taken a look at, it's a pretty great website we've gone over many a time. I haven't talked about it lately, but it's called Trueflation. It uses different uh, data points. It uses Chainlink as an oracle to pull in outside data sets to give you a real-time description of uh, what inflation is. And I got to tell you, I mean, the Fed's been doing their job. I mean, it peaked out around March, March? Yeah, about March, eh, June or so. But it's come down quite a bit. And if we take a look, now they just, they added UK. Jeez, crime at Christmas, 13.65%. I don't know how Europe does it. I don't know how you guys do it. That's dangerous. Uh, bad stuff. Bad stuff, Dennis. 100% of ground nuclear. Includes paper motion. Yeah, I've just been, there's a little thing that you might see above as you come in and says includes paper motion. And uh, I was talking to um, uh, Paul Barone from the Paul Barone Network. I said, hey man, why do you have that up, up on your screen all the time? even though you don't talk about anything. I mean, you talk about some things, or you don't have like a paper motion. He goes, I don't know, it's like a gray area. He goes, I have affiliate links, so I don't really want to deal with it. I'm like, yeah, maybe I should do that. So I just put, I just click on the includes paper motion all the time. And then I don't get as much revenue, but who cares? It's just, whatever. It just makes it, uh, makes it clean. So just so you guys know, and there's a link in the description, they're almost all affiliate links, almost all of them. And I even say on each of the affiliate links, I say, this is an affiliate link. So I just want to be sure everybody knows that. <laughs> How about clean? How about clean coal? Uh, drool coin. Ah, jerk, he's got a good one here. Good advice. If you start now buying and scale, now this is, Jarky, not me. Uh, good advice. If you start now, buy and scale five hundred dollars on twenty k, thousand. Oh, okay, thousand dollars on eighteen k, two thousand on fifteen k, four thousand on ten k, ten thousand on five k, and twenty thousand on hundred dollars Bitcoin. If you lose it, so be it. If not, you can thank me. And this is what Ben talks about: this dynamic DCAing. So as the price starts to go down from from your buy-in price, your original buy-in price, you just start to go. Okay, well. I bought it at 20 and now it's at 18. So if I'm going to spend, you know, 100 bucks a, a week, well, now I'm going to spend 150 bucks a week. And then you just kind of just ladder it down because if you're here right now in this bear market, I don't think you believe that we're going to go to zero. There's too much money sloshing around. There's just too much. Also, you know why I don't think it's, it's, uh, uh, we're going to see Bitcoin go to zero or crypto go to zero. It's because the government needs some revenue. Did you remember this, this picture I showed you? Yeah. Well, do you think the government really wants you to save your money and just stick it in a bank account and not get some of that back? No, they want you to invest. They want you to invest. They want you to sell. They want you to, to, to pull those out as far as capital gains tax goes, especially short term. They love short-term capital gains because that could help them de decrease the deficit. I don't know what your country's like, but this is my country. So, like, first of all, I don't think it's going to zero. The government wants you to invest so they can get that money back. And also, just take a look at BlackRock. BlackRock with its 8.5 trillion assets under management now, uh, they're offering um, um, a Bitcoin product to their to their investors, to their to their to their big clients. And that's big money coming around. I am hesitant to say it's smart money. I just say it's big money. And um, this is not like even like 2017. This isn't even like 2020. There's 
so much money coming in and sloshing around. I don't see it going to zero. So that suggestion that Bajarki had, that's a pretty great suggestion. I can't tell you to do it exactly, but it makes a lot of sense to me. And if we just think about those four-year cycles, which I'm always harping on, I think in 2025, I think we'll be okay with buying a $20,000 Bitcoin. I could be wrong, but uh, that's what I got. All right. What's your stance on climate change? I don't see it. I don't think it's... Uh, it doesn't exist. I mean, it's just like a big, we're in a big globe. We're, we're, we're just in a big orb. And the things that we do sh probably should affect everything around us. Don't that make sense? I'm not going to go into details, but I'll just say this. You want to fix some of this global warming? Or if it is what it is, uh, try to go to nuclear. Maybe get away from uh, all the fossil fuels. I don't know if anybody's like really up, up in arms about that, but why not? Wow, look at this one. Mental X says Solana traded speed for security and Sol is a failed protocol. It does have issues. But I mean, it still is in beta. Remember that. Jeez, it's already at an 18%. It is pretty positive. You know, it's more positive now than it was in the bull run. The bull run, the bull run sucked. Everybody was like, ah, Rob, you don't know what you're doing because these institutions, we're never going to have a, a real crypto winner anymore. It's just going to go down a little bit. They'll never sell. I'm like, they'll sell. I think they'll sell. <laughs> Only Greece and Puerto Rico will survive too much sun. Yeah. I got to tell you, though, Puerto Rico, I mean, it's got a lot of sun, but it's not like El Paso. Charles has a good point. The DCA from here looks so much better than last year this time. Well, we're pretty pretty overheated. And remember, if you're if you're trying to trying to look at like it's hard to time the markets, but just to like some good entry points, there's always those those um, graphs from look into Bitcoin. And um, those are the ones I'm always talking about. Look into Bitcoin.com. They're a hundred percent free. They're very high quality. Uh, charts you can take a look at, and um, they seem to have great information. So if you're looking for something like that, then yeah. And what Charles is saying here is it does look really good. If you take a look at the MVRV, the market value versus realized value, I mean, we've already bottomed out on June 13th. There's a lot of different bottoms out. That didn't sound good. There's a lot of different bottoming going on in the uh, in the market. And um, it's if you just take a look at the the different charts, but there's always going to be some people will say it can go lower, and it can. So that's why I personally, as good as all these charts are, I still don't trust them 100%. So I'm not backing up the truck and putting everything in. I'm just kind of waiting, see where we go. <laughs> Sharky. Thanks for the super sticker. Sharky's always doing good work. But save it, save it, save it. Put in uh, some other assets. I don't know about this one. Uh, hey, Rob, is it worth buying Coinbase shares now or wait until the stock market falls further later this week? You know what you could do? Not a financial advice, but I'm gonna do the same thing I did last time, which was just wait for the Jackson Hole announcement or the, uh, the speech. Let Jerome speak what he has to say because that's 10 a.m. Eastern time, which would be 8 a.m. Uh, mountain time. So all they have to do is listen to that, that, uh, that speech. If he starts talking about, you know, hey, it's going to be uh, more of a bearish outlook, or we're going to be very hawkish, we're going to really start to increase rates, the market will probably fall. And all they got to do is just wait for it to fall for an hour or two and then just snag some discounted stuff and then wait for all the bots to stop trading. And it'll just kind of, you know, just pump up a little bit because that's how usually they go. Or if he comes out and says, hey, we're very dovish. We think we're going to have a medium soft landing. This is what we're going to do based on the data. And I just buy right there. I mean, it's, uh, that's what I would do, but not what you should do. Ah, look at that. People are changing into solar energy for money. Now that's interesting. Will Solana recover after the hacks? Well, remember Solana, the, the layer one solution, correct me if I'm wrong, they weren't hacked, 
it was it was hacks within their ecosystem. So people who built on Solana, that was the issue. And if that's the issue, then that's an ecosystem problem. That's a project problem. And those will go away if they can't make it. But Solana, as I understand it, has not been hacked. It's been down a couple of times. It's had some DDoS attacks and things like that. But we'll see. Jerky doing his thing. <laughs> Power bottom. Uh, are you found a quant? Not really. I because I and but you have to understand. I haven't done my research into it. So just because I said that doesn't mean it's bad or anything. It's just I haven't done enough research into it. It's a good question. So Monty says, "How did you add a dog into your green screen?" This is actually not a green. It is a green screen, but it's a it is a, uh, a GIF, a video that's in that's loops. So like that's why you see like the uh, the fans sometimes will move and the things will move. Something I'm still it's just me in my mom's basement. Rob, thoughts on mobile wallets like Exodus MetaMask? I actually asked this question yesterday on Twitter, and I asked people, where do you use your MetaMask? Do you use it on uh, on your mobile phone or on your browser or both? And it was sixty, roughly 64% said that they only use MetaMask on their browser. I don't know if you guys know this, but first of all, MetaMask is a hot wallet, so it's it's susceptible to different issues. It's not cold storage. But if you want to use things like the Binance Smart Chain, if you want to use like Polygon Smart Chain, and you want to move things like pretty quickly, think of it like just some place where you want to put a little bit of, of crypto in there so you can do transactions and things like that. That's how, I, uh, that's how I treat it. And what's great about that is that if I want to use the Polygon network and the Binance Smart Chain, uh, it's very easy to implement those in the, uh, in the mobile device. Also, you can see all your NFTs on on ethereum which is pretty cool so i like that and it's on my phone and i can get to go now i don't keep 20 bitcoin on there that would be ridiculous but um i like them now exodus i don't use i just use metamask yes there's only uh, one digital asset channel so that is a good investment invest in yourself always rob what's your thoughts on world mobile token at the moment i think they're doing great things I would like to see Mickey Watkins and the team do, do what they are, are actually saying they're doing, which is uh, expanding. Also, if you don't know, there's this website called WMTScan.com. And if you take a look at it, you can take a look at just how much they're how they're much they're moving and uh, growing. Oh, look at that! Total network consumption in 24 hours is one terabytes. Just like a week ago, it was like 900, whatever megabytes, 900 something now, something like that. Correct me where I'm wrong. Unique users. I think we were at 5,000 last week. Now we're at 6,500. Network uptime 111 days. So this is actually a real working product that people are using in Africa for telecommunications and uh, it's based on it's built on the Cardano, the cardano blockchain and if you want to find hold on that video there's this website ah <sighs> dan teaches crypto and i've done uh, i did an original deep dive in here and then there was an update in august we did which was uh it was really good and it explains exactly what's going on. I like that project a lot. And uh, just so everybody knows, I'm super biased. I bought a ton of World Mobile token, and I am an Earth Node operator. So you have to understand, again, if I'm talking about it on this channel, it's because I bought it and I have skin in the game. I usually don't talk about things I don't, I don't own because to me it's boring. I'm just, that's just how it is. Not your mom's basement. <laughs> Yeah, Jing and Chow's got a great point. I understand Fed is to increase interest rates, but they would prom they would promise 95 billion quantitative tightening every month starting in September. They only did half. Yeah, I doubt on quantitative I doubt on quantitative raise to 95 billion because it might cause a massive crash. People think it'll people think that will cause a massive crash, and if they keep raising rates, it'll cause massive crashes. It will. That's true, but that's. 
you know, people think it's like, it's like a science. It's almost more like an art. They're just trying to figure out which one they can get away with and then go from there. So I thought they were going to raise a, a full point and they only went uh, uh, 0.75 basis points. Huh. Rob, does it make sense to sell portfolios at a loss to buy back lower, good for tax and accumulation? It's risky, but could be a win-win. So it's a great question. And I've actually done this. This is called wash trading. You cannot do this in uh, traditional equities. But since you are dealing in property, aka crypto, you can do this. I did this a year and a half ago. I can't remember when it was. But I sold uh, all my XRP uh, because it was during that time when, <laughs> you know, uh, the Fed or the, uh, yeah, they got sued. The Fed sued Ripple, not XRP. And, um, or the SEC, not the Fed. The SEC sued Ripple. And I said, well, this is going to keep going down. It did, it did. And when it hit 21 cents, I sold it all. And I took a major loss. But then people always say that about how I'll uh, rob your paper hands and whatever. Remember, I did buy a, a big chunk of it back because you can do that. The only thing is that you can only use $3,000 worth of those losses every year. Check with your CPA and your accountant. There may be other rules and regulations in your jurisdictions, but that's just what mine told me. So it could be, just, just, just remember, there is a limit to how much you can use per year. Now, if, you're, if you take millions of losses, uh, it just uh, depends how long you're going to live, I guess. That's a great question. Rob, how to get out of the, your mom's basement? So, this is a very lofty question, actually. It's, um, when you're going through, through, through life and, and you're just trying to figure yourself, your, your way out of it, like there's different times in your life, right? When you're young and you don't have much to really fall back on, or if some kind of economic downturn forces you into a less than ideal situation, really it all just comes down to time again. And it's just, there's times when, and it's not about you having a spending problem. I always hate when those, when, when people say, you know what you got to do is just stop going to Starbucks and, and buying those lattes. I'm like, really? Do you think that's what's keeping people poor? A freaking latte at two, at two in the afternoon? I don't think that's what it is. I think there's some spending happens you can do, but really what it comes down to is, is there's an income problem in some way, shape, or form. And um, now you have to ask yourself this. And when we talk, I talk about this in, my, in my, my, it was a risk video we talked about. And it was, it was who, what, who, what, and squeeze. And the thing is, is, you know, if you don't invest, right, to get out of your mom's place, right, if you don't invest whatsoever, who's that going to affect? Well, if you don't invest, then there's other ways that you can do it. I mean, you can, you can start to pick up other jobs and do those things, but you re, you, again, you're trading time for money. I never, I never liked that whole philosophy. It never really worked out for me very well. And that's why I just did businesses for most of my life. And um, so there's that. So you got to figure out how to stop trading time for money, first of all. And uh, anything that you can think of where you're sleeping and making money, that's what you want to be in. And that's what investments do for you. That could be everything from crypto to traditional equities to, I mean, even precious metals and real estate. So now the next, next question is, well, you know, well, what if I don't invest? Well, who does that going to affect? It's going to affect you. What's the worst case scenario? You never get out of your mom's, <laughs> never get out of your mom's basement. And what's the squeeze? Meaning is the juice worth the squeeze? Is it worth you to get out of there? Absolutely. So for me, the thing I always see is this, if I don't invest, what's the money going to do for me? It just sits there in my bank account and just it slowly evaporates. I have to make that money work for me in some way. And that's either by investing into crypto, digital assets, real estate or something where the money goes to work for me and doesn't just sit there. So that's the basic lesson I could see that might help some people in those positions and stop trading time for money. You'll never get ahead. I know when I was, I mean, even when I was working in the medical field, I'd say, I'd see doctors that were like buried in debt because of their, uh, um, uh, tuition, re tuition payments. It's just, it's, it's just crazy. <laughs> Let me watch these videos. Are private keys not your coins? Private keys. This guy is so grouchy. I am grouchy. It's true. Ah, not that bad. <laughs> Long time viewer, first time asker. 
global and let's open global domination. Maybe so. Yeah, new medicine. Um, DHEA and Tongkatali, T O N G K A T A L I. But I still got to go through a bunch of tests. Ah, Robert's back. I think the world is wrongly treating Bitcoin as a risk on. Can't fight the Fed type asset. I think this mistake creates opportunity on a 10 year basis. My opinion of it could be, but it's going to be, it's, it's, it just has to play out. That's really what it comes down to. I don't, I don't think, I was listening to uh, Anthony Scaramucci. He talks about how Bitcoin really isn't, isn't a, a hedge against inflation, especially with the, uh, with the volatility. And I got to tell you, he's right. I mean, even Bitcoin maxis, we'll, we'll talk, we'll, some of them will give credence and say, you know what? Bitcoin sometimes isn't a, isn't a great hedge against inflation. And sometimes it's better just to hold a stable coin for the short term because it holds its value. And that's the truth. I mean, look, if you're making 200 bucks a month and uh, someone gives you $200 worth of Bitcoin and it goes down 25%, you know, that's huge. But your stable coin won't do that in the, in the short term. That's why there's a difference between the long-term, short-term investing and just meeting your basic needs. <laughs> George needs to get thicker skin. He blocks anybody who disagrees with him. Man, let me tell you. If I blocked everybody who disagrees with me, I don't think I'd have a channel. Thank you, Amy. Uh, I sold some of my crypto investing going in the dark. Axlotl and Betafish for breeding operation. Might be a valuable solution. And Capricorn says it very right. Dan is not your dad, not financial advice. Very true. So this is a great question. So Rob, why buy these DGEN coins when we know that long-term, they all crash under perform Bitcoin either? See, the, the key there is long-term. And that's a problem in this. No, it's not a problem. It's, it's actually good. Because you have to understand that for a long-term investor, you want a long-term outlook, right? Three, five, 10 years, not a big deal. Buy and hold, diamond hands, all that good stuff, right? But that's what we talk about over on, on Dan DGEN. There's some cryptos you're not going to hold forever because they're not going to last. They're like snowflakes. I mean, they look beautiful and nice and, uh, you know, they can pile up and look pretty good, but uh, they will evaporate at some point. And that's when you want to get rid of them. So like the ones that I'm talking, the ones that I'm talking about, and who knows, some of them could have a, have a long-term outlook, but I'm not holding, why, why am I? Why am I saying this? Why am I not just showing you? This doesn't make any sense. So there's a link in the description. It's called the Dan Degen sheet or something like that. And these are the four that I've gotten into. And uh, so like, and, and the reason I got into them is because I always take a look at uh, the cut, as I call it, the C-U-T-T, -T. will it make the cut, which is how big is the community? What's the utility? What is it? What has a team done before to where it leads into something else? And what are the tokenomics? Am I going to get dumped on? And these ones, I get uh, tons of projects. And over the last year, these, I've only done four. Gensokishi, Everdome, Fame, and Sweatcoin. Does that mean I'm going to hold Gensokishi forever? No, no, that's not. That's not. That's not the point. The point is, is to grab like for this one. And then people always ask me, well, how much they pay you? I I paid all these all these places. I paid a a good amount of money to be into this project. They don't pay me. This isn't 2017 where people give you coins and you just dump on people. And I also get locked up for 12 months. Now, like with Gensokishi, when it launched, I got a certain percentage that was released, but I'm still waiting for the rest of it. So when this released, Gensokishi, it was like at 42 cents, went all the way up to, to $1.45. So I sold some, especially for my initial investment to get it back. And, with, and, the, and then, of course, a little profit, of course, you know, right? And, uh, but I'm holding, holding some to see where it goes because right now it's not doing so hot. Everdome, same thing. Fame, same thing. And then Sweatcoin. Sweatcoin's different only because I'm not going to get any uh, until 12 months out and then 24 months is the lockup period. So, again, these things, we're not holding these things like, like Bitcoin. These aren't going to be the next reserve currencies of the world. They could be something great, which is why I never sell any or... I never sell every token that I get 
but I do take profits along the way. And I talk about this ad nauseum. I gotta get this out of here. I talk about this all the time, don't I? On these little rules here. Don't invest more than you can afford to lose and, and think it's all gone. Everything's a scam until proven otherwise. Don't keep anything on exchanges. Don't use any leverage and take profits along the way. So, but uh, you're right on that, on that statement. These will not, for the long term, they might not do better than, uh, than Bitcoin, but they still, have their, they still have their role. And that's it. Thanks, Joe. I'm trying. Can I still invest in Sweatcoin? Yeah, you know what's great, Monty? Well, you can't really because they haven't, have, they haven't had the token generation event. All you get, to, David's going to love this. So uh, you can download the app and it's free. And for every thousand steps you take, you get a sweat token. That's it. That's the whole rub. Well, where's the revenue coming from, Rob? Watch the deep dive video. I explain it. Yeah, and Robert says, I forgot to say that. Thank you, Robert. Um, my DGEN plays are very small. It's like 3 to 5% of my portfolio. I'm swinging for the fences. That's one. Lexi says, was your first event in real estate or a different kind of business? It was real estate. Actually, it was a sports facility. <laughs> it's, it's the sand volleyball facility we have here. And uh, then we got into houses. My wife had already been in, in apartments. And then I did online education for nursing students to pass their clinical exam. And then it went into Amazon business. And then I just kind of dabbled in those types of those things for a while because it's lucrative, but they got boring. And now I did this YouTube channel. And I just, and the YouTube channel is actually quite easy. It's not that hard. Uh, over time, you just get used to it. So like this is an hour long. The research, I got someone who does research for me. Big E, thank you. And uh, just go from there. Where can you go to buy Swickland? You Chris, you can't buy it yet. Um, but it's going to happen. Well, September 12th is a token generation event. And I know, I know one of the exchanges that it's going to be listed on. And it's a big one. But you know what? It could crash and burn. You never know. Uh, I think that's it. Hey, I'm, I think I made it at the end. <laughs> This is a good question. Rob, are you going to rug? Are you going to rug pull us? I can't even rug pull you on Sweatcoin. I, because remember, like I did the initial investment as an early investor because I'm a credit investor. But they said, okay, great, 12-month uh, lockup. And I was like, oh, okay. So 12-month lockup means I don't even get anything. That's, that's the cliff. And then they release it slowly over 24 months. or It goes from 12 months, then 13 months, 14, 15. It's all in the tokenomics. So... You got a year, uh, but after that, I will probably sell some to make my initial, my initial investment back. That is the truth. So that's it. But it's a good, I think it's a good project. I like it better than step in. Because step in, you have to buy that expensive NFT. But people say that that's what makes a step in great because you buy the expensive NFT and you repair it, and that's where the economics come from. Sweatcoin just one different way with that. That's all. All right, David, I was able to squeeze in some sweat coin information, so thanks. All right, everybody, so that's it. We're coming up on an hour. Oh, let's see. Did I miss? Army give a class. <laughs> I'm not a credit investor. So that's it for today. So like, look, if you like today's video, give it a thumbs up. That uh, seems to go a long way. Also consider subscribing, all that great stuff. But that's it for today. So thanks so much for stopping by. I do appreciate hanging out with me for an hour or so. But uh, that's it for today. So thank you, and I'll see you on the next one. Adiós.